This guy is my neighbor, Bob Dinkins, from up the road. Now, I've just given him a watch. He's pretty happy about that. He thinks it's real nice to get a gift. I guess he doesn't know much about the Trojan War. <laughs> Remember, Bob, don't put it on till you get home. <laughs> you have a neighbor or a relative who keeps dropping in unannounced and is always quick to tell you what you're doing wrong or you're an idiot or he's going to call the cops unless you give him a beer. <laughs> well, here's what you do. Get yourself one of those invisible fence units uh, that used to keep your dog inside your yard. And you bury the wire around the whole perimeter of your property. Then you put a special collar onto your dog, and every time he gets near the buried wire, he gets zapped. Now, you may notice I've taken the zapper out of this collar. That's because I installed it into that watch I just gave my annoying neighbor. I figure any system that can keep a dog in should be able to keep a goof out. Besides, this is way too cruel to use on an animal. Okay, he's off the property. I think we should arm the perimeter. Oh, look, he's coming back. Probably wants to tell me something else I don't need to know. Hey, Bob, check your watch. Looks like it's payback time. <laughs> going on here today. I don't know the exact temperature, but uh, the basement of the lodge is dry. And, uh, <laughs> that hasn't happened since... Well, that's never happened, actually. <laughs> okay, I think I know which building this shingle came off of. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Uncle Red! Merry Christmas! Christmas Merry! Merry Christmas! I hope that's sunstroke, Carol. <laughs> trying to get you in the spirit for our first annual Christmas in July celebration! Um, why would this be a good thing, do you think? Well, because it brings crowds. It brings visitors up to the lodge. Mm -hmm. They'll think, Possum Lake is having Christmas in July? That's crazy. Let's go. What if they think, that's crazy. Let's stay away in droves. Well, then we just got to keep putting out that Christmas cheer, don't we? <laughs> We have to get every cynic to join hand in hand and say, I don't care if it is July. I wish everyone the best and merriest Christmas ever. Boy, I, I hope your medical insurance is paid up, Harold. I need your help. I need your help. Yeah, you know, because the lodge is a big part of Christmas around here, right? Yeah. So, you know how you put those lights around the lodge every year at Christmas time? Yeah. I need you to do that again right now in July. Get the festive move started. Yeah, all right, sure, sure. That's fine, it's good. Yeah. Yes, no complaining, no arguing, that's it. I mean, I actually put lights all around the lodge, you know, that's a, and you just don't, that, you're gonna go along with it? That's so great, I really appreciate it. Well, I, it is a lot of work for me, but I figure if I help you now, then you're gonna owe me one later, right? Absolutely, yeah. anything, anytime. All right, yeah, great. <laughs> Done. Lodge Word Game! Today's contestant will be playing for the Possum Lodge Word Game home version. Okay, Red, you have 30 seconds to get my camera, cover your ears, to say this word. Respect. Respect. Yeah, yeah all right, man. Okay, and go. Okay, Mike, uh, when you were a kid, you were taught to always give this to your parents. My take. <laughs> okay, if you want to have a lasting relationship with a woman, you have to treat her with... Antidepressants. <laughs> okay, your mother probably told you that if you want to get ahead in life, you've got to show a little... Thigh. <laughs> Red, you're almost out of time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I got it. This was a big hit for Aretha Franklin in the 60s. You can remember something from the 60s? <laughs> Boy, you gotta respect that. There we go. I got a letter from our local environmental agency. Apparently one of our neighbors has registered a complaint about all the junk we have lying around the lodge. 
especially our unfinished projects. I know who it is, too. It's that new guy in the fancy A-frame. He's been giving us grief ever since he saw us cooking weenies over a tire fire. He says the lodge is keeping his property value down. Well, sure it is. It always has. If it didn't, he wouldn't have been able to afford the place. But now he's gone and got the government involved, and I gotta get the car out of here. Actually, they say if I can just remove the engine and the gas tank, they're the biggest environmental hazards. I guess they never smell the upholstery. <laughs> now, as always, I like to do two things at once, because that means I can work slower. So I have an idea that'll satisfy the government and increase the property value all at the same time. Can you guess what it is? I'm going to take out the engine and the gas tank, and what are you supposed I'm going to do with them? Exactly right. An automatic lawn sprinkler system. <laughs> You're good. Okay, now to take out the engine and the gas tank, all you do is take out the engine and the gas tank. pretty easy here. I got everything I need to make the engine go mounted inside the boat here. Now, I had to make a few minor alterations to the water pump to turn it into a sprinkler. First of all, I quadrupled the size of the intake hose, so this baby will pass some serious water. Now, I just dropped that into the lake. Okay, now, to get my big spray, I took the nozzle off the lodge fire hose and attached that to the output side of the water pump. I'm not really worried about the lodge catching fire. We keep it pretty damp. And here's a little extra piece of ingenuity. I attach the rope just to the one side of the boat, and that way she'll kind of swing and sway with the wind and the waves, and I'll end up getting maximum coverage with my water spray. Oh, yeah. And for safety's sake, I added a remote starter. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> you guys about succeeding and failing. Now, when you were growing up and going to school, they put a lot of emphasis on success. I don't agree with that. I don't think success is nearly as important as failure. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about total failure, where you lose everything and live in a cardboard box under a bridge. <laughs> I'm talking about manageable failure. You know, like being temporarily unemployed or losing your car keys or buying something on television that's not available in stores. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, success is good, but it doesn't happen to most of us. And if it did, they'd change it, believe me. <laughs> so I figure, rather than spending your whole life feeling bad because you've never succeeded, I think for us normal people, it's better to spend your whole life feeling confident that you can handle failure. So here's what you do. Take some little harmless challenge and just fail at it. Right away, just fail, just flunk right out at it, okay? Then get over it and get on with your life, and just keep doing that over and over and over again. <laughs> What'll happen is, you'll stop being afraid of failing. You might even fluke a success. <laughs> at the very least, you'll be a happy failure, and your friends will have a lot of laughs at your expense. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Welcome to the experts portion of the show, where we explore those three little words men find so hard to say. I don't know. Yes, those are the words. Okay. Today's letter reads as follows, dear experts. A guy at work has owed me $100 for over a year. 
Yesterday, I found his wallet in the locker room. The wallet had approximately $187.13 in it. <laughs> Should I keep some of it, all of it, or none of it? Brett? Well, I have an answer, but I just can't wait to hear what Mike has to say. <laughs> Okay, sure. Uh, well, um, I would return the wallet to its proper owner, complete with all the person's money. And that's your answer? That's my answer for television. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'd, I'd return the wallet, but uh, I'd take out the hundred bucks the guy owed me. Okay, well, I, mean, I kind of agree with both of you here. I, I certainly wouldn't keep the wallet. I would chuck it into a dumpster after I hoisted the hundred and eighty bucks out of her. <laughs> that is very disappointing. You notice a difference between our answer and yours? Yeah, I didn't lie. <laughs> Red, you can't steal a man's wallet. Well, he didn't steal the wallet. The guy just left it lying around. Hey, it's fair game. You know, I think Mr. Green might be right. No, he's not right. Well, sure I am. And I'll tell you the problem, baggy pants. <laughs> baggy pants. Hey, I like to wear mine a little bit tight. That way I can always feel my wallet right now. <laughs> You looking for this? How'd you get my wallet? Well, maybe you just left it lying around. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But uh, first, I'm going to take out the 20 bucks you owe me. I don't owe you 20 bucks. You owe me 20 bucks. Oh, okay. Well, then, here you go. Now we're even. <laughs> we're not even, Mike. This is my money. Okay, okay, fine. And uh, <clears throat> uh, here's the 20 bucks show, yeah? Great, thank you. Hey, that's my wallet! <laughs> uh, Mr. Green, yeah. you owe Winston 20 bucks. <laughs> Have you seen these toy trains where when they run into something, they just turn around and head off in another direction? Kind of like a politician at a press conference? <laughs> I bet if I let this thing go, it'd cover the whole floor. In fact, I'm counting on it. Now, you're probably wondering why I would have a toy like this. I don't have any kids. I don't really enjoy a toy running around underfoot and making annoying noises. You probably couldn't guess why I have this toy if I gave you a month of Sundays. But then again, you don't know that I promised Bernice that I'd vacuum this room. <laughs> still trying to convince everybody to celebrate Christmas in July. He's all dressed up like a Christmas angel. <laughs> He's got this booth downtown where he's selling Christmas cookies and pumpkin pies. And he's singing Christmas carols. What is it with singing voices? You ever notice how the bad ones are always loud? <laughs> Nobody wants to hark when they hear this Herald Angel sing. <laughs> You okay? You look a little pie-eyed. <laughs> Can I have a towel, please? Here's, here's a curtain. <laughs> well, this was a learning experience. Oh, yeah. Never to sing when there's pies around? <laughs> no, that this town needs a little Christmas right this very minute. Oh, there's hardly any spirit of human kindness out there at all. Hey, Harold, give it up, okay? A pumpkin pie in the face is no harm done. You're not going to get off so lucky when the corn cobs come out. <laughs> Do not quit, Uncle Red. I've already spoken to some of the lodge members, yeah. and they've agreed to join me in a very special Christmas parade. Oh, no. <laughs> Harold is frosty. The snowman costume's ridiculous. It's hot. It's itchy and melting in here. Well, now, there is a jolly happy soul. <laughs> How do you like my red nose, Mr. Green? You wearing a red nose? <laughs> I think you guys look great. I need your help, too, though, Uncle Red. Huh? Yeah, I need you to drive the float. Oh, all right. Yeah, sure. Well, what is it, anyway? Well, it's a soft drink delivery truck. Oh, yeah? Well, what, what, what kind of soft drink? Root beer. Oh, so it's a root beer float. <laughs> <laughs> Am I supposed to laugh at that? Well, it's Christmas, Harold, huh? It's parade time, Uncle Red, huh? All right. Hey, what costume are you wearing, Mr. Green? I'm going like this. I'm going as a smart one. I think I can pull that off. Should work if he doesn't talk. 
I want to replace the tire swing out the back, but Walter seemed to think there's nothing wrong with it. He said it was, and he's the one that used this, so I didn't want to argue with him. So he just wanted to demonstrate the stuff. See, I don't. I think it needs assistance. Yeah. Uh, I think it needs. I think it needs to be replaced. And of course, what we need now to do that is uh, is another tire. We usually have tires around the lodge. We kind of we keep lots of stuff around around the lodge. So we let Walter pick. See, like I say, he's the one that uses the tire swing, and he's got one right there, though. Give her, a, give her a bounce there, Walter. Make sure she's okay. <laughs> no, I don't think so. So, we're moving on. Actually, we have a lot of junk. Uh, it's funny how things just pile up. You don't get things put away properly. I, I don't know quite exactly what we had in mind when we created this little display, but... Probably nothing. And we keep moving on. There's tires. There's you know what? There's tires over behind one of the outbuildings there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, look at all the tires. We've got all kinds of... We like any of these down on the, down the ground, but then... The, of course, Walter sees one up on the roof there that he wants. And so the big question is, how does a tire get up get up on the roof? And Walter has no idea. So uh, he wants us to pile the tires up on top there, and he'll just uh, he'll just climb up and uh, get down what he sees as his favorite tire. And Walter is uh, kind of athletic, and up he goes. That looks a little shaky to me, but no, he's, he's fine with it. So he gets up there, and uh, he's just going to grab the tire and just, I guess, just throw it down to the other. Just keep her balanced. Nice, nice balance. Nice balance. Yeah. Oh, you're fine. You're good. 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 Okay. 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 Come on, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Oh! So now we got to get him out of there, and, uh, you know, now the first few come off no problem, but uh, we're getting down into the one of the radials with the smaller rim, and it just won't fit around his waist, so... Rather than take the tire, we figure, why don't we just use that tire, get Walter over to the swing, and just kind of attach the rope right directly to the tire that Walter is wearing. That's a little bit easier. So uh, we get that hooked on there, and then I give him a little nice little jump. It's not, it's not exciting enough. He's complaining. He wants it. He wants a real good. So I get this idea. Get him to lie down. Lie down, Walter. Now, Winston, let's give him a real good, real good. And I think, unfortunately, we did push him a little too hard. He broke right off there. And down she comes, and then up the slide, and then uh, into the top. Oh! But he's all right. He's fine. He's all good. Okay, that's how the tire ended up on the roof, I guess. Now, here's an idea that's either going to change what you think of me or confirm what you already suspected. You know when the roads are covered with snow and ice? Instead of going out and buying snow tires like you're made of money, or staying home like you're fun to be with, why don't you try this? Hook up a couple of old shower heads in front of each of your wheels, pointing straight down at the road. Then you connect them all together with this flexible hose, which you can get from any construction site during a strike. And you run the hoses all the way down to the back and hook them up to the exhaust pipe of your vehicle. <laughs> And it's just that easy. You don't need snow tires because the heat from the exhaust will melt the snow long before your tires ever get there. <laughs> Give it a try. You'll have people in your town wondering where you got the hot wheels rather than where you got the hot car. disgusting, embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And believe me, I've had some dandies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, thanks, Harold. That was a hoot. <laughs> that had to be the most fun parade ever. <laughs> that wasn't fun. I thought you guys were going to get killed in the back of that truck. <laughs> Red got him going pretty quick, huh? <laughs> we're going to the meeting. Are you coming? No, I'm going to wait right here for the Grinch. <laughs> Hey, where is he anyway? Uh, he's uh, parking the pop truck and apologizing to the police. <laughs> oh, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> what was that all about? What? The entire Christmas parade only took 45 seconds. How fast were you going? I don't know. My stomach was blocking the dashboard. <laughs> you know, Harold, we were hot, and I'll tell you, that breeze was very refreshing. <laughs> A Christmas parade is not supposed to peel rubber. Christmas symbolizes peace on earth, not hell on wheels. So, you're not happy with Santa? Not when Santa turns a Christmas parade into a demolition derby, no. Oh, 
Well, Harold, no one was ever at risk there. I don't think either of the spectators were injured. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. You are the worst Santa there has ever been. Okay. Oh, I think you've forgotten that I'm making a list and checking it twice. And that was a little naughty, not very nice. <laughs> Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? No. Well, no wonder, because you cried and you pouted. <laughs> well, let me look in my sock here, little boy. I think I might have something for you. What do you got? I got something. What do you got? I might have something. What do you got? I'm just looking. I might have something. What do you got? I got something. What do you got? What? What do you got? What? What do you got? Oh, 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 what is that? <laughs> well, that's a can of root beer, Harold. But you know, it rolled around a fair bit in the truck, though, so I would say don't open that until Christmas. Okay. <laughs> It's meeting time. Yeah. All right. Where you go? Where you go? Okay. okay. No, you're good. You're good. Oh, you're good. Watch the door. All right. Good. Okay. So if uh, Mrs. Claus is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I'm really hoping there's something for me under the tree tonight. Or even better, I'm hoping I can actually come into the house. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, Merry Christmas, and keep your stick on the ice. Okay, guys, the Christmas in July thing was not a big success. We're canceling the whole deal, which I think is good, because that would have led to New Year's on Firecracker Day, and that would cost lives. 